Hey everybody, I want to thank you for the messages that I've been getting. I mean that from the bottom of my heart and, and the people I've run into in different towns this week have encouraged me. Some saying thank you for praying for me and some saying thank you for being real. And I say that not boastfully because we all need prayer. I need prayer. And we all need to be real. Not real holy, not real spiritual, not real what you think somebody wants you to be, but the real you. See, that's what people really need to see. They need to see that we fall short and that we can be honest about it. They need to see that we also know that we can come to God and say, Lord, forgive me. And he says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of all sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But it seems to me that there's a lot of people that want to live a fake life. They want to live this life. Where they believe that people actually think they're super holy. They think people actually look up to you and say, well, I hope I'm like you. And most of the time, people are looking at you and saying, I don't want to be like you. You're miserable. You don't look happy. You know, I've walked in joy this week last two weeks i've been really happy why because i've understood my salvation my salvation is not about being guilt full of guilt and condemnation but about walking in the, the truth walking in the light of christ and knowing that i'm forgiven and that god loves me and that there are sins out there that are greater than some and it's not abortion it's not homosexuality it's not transgenderism it's not Racist. It's not all this other stuff that we marginalize and, and, and cut off certain people that we don't want to be around. But it's the sins that are actually not only in the church, but the very sins that you're committing that God really hates. I want to read that to you today. In Proverbs the 6th chapter, starting in verse 16, it says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven, are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that are swift to run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and get this one, this is an abomination. He that soweth discord among the brethren. Now, I'm here to tell you, I believe the Word of God is there for a reason. It's no mistake. Those sins, predominantly I see in every church I go to, most Christian people are committing these sins. I've committed them and still fall short many times, being prideful, saying things we shouldn't say. Causing discord among the brethren. There's been times when I've said stuff that I shouldn't say, even though I had I felt like I was telling the truth. There's sometimes you just need to keep your mouth shut. And you know what people really need? They need to see somebody that's real. And, and by being real, is not going and talking about somebody behind their back or, or, or getting involved in the gossip, but just saying, you know what? Instead of us talking about them, why don't we pray for them? Because that person, there's no telling what they're going through. There's no telling what they're dealing with. Who are we to judge anybody? Who are we to come down on anybody? We better check our own backyard. And it's easy to get prideful. And especially when you're around other people that are a bunch of fakes and just trying to, to live like they're just better than everybody. You're not better than nobody. There's nobody out there that you're better than. Stop being fake. Somebody is going to end up going to hell because of it. Because they want to see something real. They want to say that there is a, God is real. That His Spirit does change you. That there is really power in Christianity. It's not some some religion, some social experience. You know, if all you can give somebody at your church or with your walk with Christ is a social experience, if that's all you can give them, what the heck would they want that for? Why would they leave the world with parties and, and good times and hanging out and getting drunk and, 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 and doing all kind of cool and fun stuff and you can say what you want to. We all had fun in those sins. Sin, the Bible even says there's pleasure in sin for a season. Sin has a payment, has wages. The wages of sin is death. We know that. That's why the gospel's so important. But why would you think that somebody would want a social experience from your church to get out of the world to come to your social experience? Why would you think that? That's silly. No, what people are looking for is a spiritual experience, a real, bona fide, life-changing, supernatural encounter with God Almighty, a spiritual experience. And you know what that's called? It's called being born again. It's called being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's called walking in power with God. That's what people need. That's what changes a man or woman. That's what gives them desire and passion for God. Not some social experience, not some premeditated walk that makes you look like you may have it all together and you're really a holy person and you're really trying to do do things that look and appear to be religious. Meanwhile, people are seeing through all that junk and if nothing else, if, if there's nothing else in your life that's hypocritical but that, they can see that you're miserable because there's nobody that's going to walk in their own power and in their own holiness, self-righteousness that's not a miserable, judgmental human being. When you get the real thing, you'll have joy, you'll, you'll have fruit, 
What is fruit? Is it going to church? No. Is it being on the church roll, being baptized? No. Is it is it is it being faithful to some denomination? Denominations man made, and I believe is divisive, and I don't even think God's pleased with it. So I'm gonna say no. What I think is fruit don't really matter. What does the Bible say is our fruit? You'll know them by their fruit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. A lot of these traits that only we can have by the Holy Spirit of God because as a human being, you can't accomplish this. You can't keep this. But the Holy Spirit of God will just manifest this in you when you walk in truth, in the light. If your gospel is hid, if the gospel is hid, if you hide the gospel by being a fake, the people that are blinded by the God of this world will never see it. We can't hide the gospel. We have to be real. We have to be upfront and honest and humble and say, look, been there, done that, just like you. There's sometimes I even fall short, but you know what? The Bible tells me if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of all sin, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever. It's a whosoever gospel. God doesn't draw a line around a homosexual or around a, 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 a gossiper or around a transgender or around a murderer or a thief or liar or a divorcee. Whosoever will, let him come. That's the gospel. Believe on Jesus Christ and be saved today. Believe on him. He loves you. He gave himself for you. And if one person sees this video and is born again, there'll be more rejoicing over heaven than 99 people that are, don't need salvation watching this video. Why? Because it's so important to God that your soul was saved. It's so important to Him that people are not fake and that we walk in truth and are real. I believe the reason that's in Proverbs I just read you is because, and God says, I hate these sins, is because these are the very sins that turn most people off because of fake Christian people. Don't be a fake. Somebody can end up going to hell because of it. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, Always be acceptable in His sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer, I praise Him. God bless you. Please share.